to commit yourself to the hands of the Lord in prayers. You want to tell the Lord that the Lord himself will speak to you. As the word of God comes to you right now, that the Lord himself, you receive forgiveness. Forgiveness from God and forgiveness within ourselves. And there will be fellowship and there will be faithful. Faithful to the Lord and faithful to the body of Christ. Let's commit ourselves and ask the Lord that the word of God we are going to hear today will do us good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we just pray that as we come into your way right now, the spirit of life, the spirit of life will wait upon your word into our hearts. And the things you are going to pass across to us even today, the grace that will go out from here, that will not just hear these things, but will go and practice them and do them. You will give to every one of us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Speak the way to every heart of God. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Shall we sit there, please? Open your Bible with me to the book of the Epistle of Paul, the Apostles, to the Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, I will read verse 7 of Ephesians chapter 1. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of his grace. The forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of his grace. Act of the Apostles chapter 2. Act of the Apostles. Chapter 2, I will read verse 42 of Acts, chapter 2, verse 42. 
and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and then in the breaking of bread. First Corinthians chapter 4. First Corinthians chapter 4. I'll read verses 1 and 2. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. In all these three references where we read this evening, you see the mention of some key words there. We've seen the word there, forgiveness, be mentioned. We've seen the words there, fellowship, be mentioned. And we see the words there, faithful, faithfulness, be mentioned. That's why this evening in our message, we are considering the message title, Forgiveness, Fellowship, and Faithfulness. Forgiveness, fellowship, and faithfulness. If you look at the message tonight, you see this message is concentrating on these three words. Three words that we need. If, uh, if we want to have relationship with God, if we want to have relationship with one another in the body of Christ, these three things we are considering today are necessary, are essentials, are important, in, not only in our fellowship with God, but also in our walk with the Lord and in our walk with one another as members of the body of Christ. You see the first word they mentioned, forgiveness. Forgiveness is the first step we need to take if we must establish a relationship with God. There cannot be a relationship with God if there is no forgiveness. If there is no forgiveness of sin. If your sins have not been pardoned. If your sins have not been washed. If your sins have not been cleansed with the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We all know that man as a result of his sin is estranged from God. There is a middle wall of partition that has been built up as a result of our sin. As a result of our iniquity. As a result of all our unrighteousness. The Bible says, the lost hand is not shortened that it cannot say. Neither is here heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquity has separated him from you that he cannot save you. That's why there is the need of forgiveness. That's why there is the need of pardon. That's why there is the need for us to receive justification from God. If we, must have a, if we must have a relationship with God. That's why Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior came. He came to save. He came to reconcile man back to God. He came to break the middle wall of partition and separation between we and God. And if you are here tonight, you are still going about with the guilt of your sin. You are still going about with the condemnation of your sin. You are still going about, you know, with the punishment of your sin. Can I tell you today that there is justification available for you. There is forgiveness available for you. There is pardon available for you. And Jesus Christ, our crucified King, He has paid the price. And all you need to do tonight is to look up to Calvary. Is to look up to him with your load of sin, with your burden of sin, and receive forgiveness from the Lord. But then, after we have been forgiven of our sin, the Lord also expects us that we should go back and demonstrate that same forgiveness to others that might have offended us. You know, brethren, we are in the family. 
when the church we are, you know, as our faces are different, so so our cultures are different, so so our upbringing are different, so so our understanding are different, understanding of life matters are different, so so our background, our upbringing, our educational, you know, uh, qualifications are different, so so you know our. Can I even put it this way? Our mental ability, I know the mental strength are also different. So as a result of that, there is no way we can put two people together, three people together, four people together, five people together that will not step on one another's toes. There is no way there will not be offenses. Can I tell you, there is no perfect fellowship here on earth. You say, oh, pastor, what do I mean by that? But the Bible says that be ye perfect as ye also you are perfect. Yeah, that perfection the Lord is talking about is the perfection of the body, is the perfection of the Christian. But the institution is said, the church of the living God. If we, the Lord has not called us to angelic perfection, you need to understand that. There is still that woman frailty in man. So as a result of that, we are bound to step on one another soul. That's why if that is not possible, Jesus wouldn't have told us that your brother will do what? How many times will he offend you in a day? And who said that? Is it Pastor Israel? It's not me. It's Jesus. We are talking about our crucified king. He has made the provision already that offenses we call. And it is possible if you are the one that is meticulous in keeping records like me. You know, he says offenses we call and begin to keep the record. You know, you wake up in the morning, 5 a.m., and your daddy's husband did not say good money. That is offense number one. You write it down. Now, after that, your daddy wife forget to make breakfast for you, and you need to go and catch that job in the morning. And you went to that job with an empty stomach. That is for you now. Offense number what now? Number two. And you are counting it that. And he says, if it were possible. That all throughout the day, 24 hours in a day, and that's your husband, or that's your wife, or even your children, or even a member in the body of Christ offends you 70 times what? Eh? Did you say seven? I'm asking you 70 times seven. What's the number there? Give it to me, mathematician in the house. 490 times in a week, and here you are. That sister just stepped upon your toes just once in a day. You say, Oh, I will never forgive her. That's not the Bible. Here you are, that your darling wife, just for that night, she was cooking, and the baby was crying. And as a result of that, that right got born. You say, what kind of wife is this? I will never forget. I will never forgive her. No. Jesus said that if you have experienced forgiveness from God, then you need to go back and demonstrate and show that same forgiveness to others that might have offended you. That's what we're talking about, forgiveness. Forgiveness is in truthful. Forgiveness we see from God and forgiveness we show to another. Forgiveness that is coming from the vertical. That one, it is not of the works of your hand. Jesus was crucified vertically so that he can pay the price of that forgiveness that is coming vertically. But then the forgiveness horizontally, the forgiveness between one another, he says we need to do that. We need to make an effort and show that forgiveness. Then we are talking about it is only then when there is forgiveness, then we can have fellowship. We can have fellowship. Fellowship between husband and wife. Fellowship as members of the church. Fellowship between the pastors and the members of the church. Fellowship between workers in the church of the living God. When there is no forgiveness, there will be no fellowship. 
And when there is no fellowship, Satan will rule in that congregation. I pray that will not be your own Lord in Jesus' name. You will not be an instrument of disaffection, of division. You will not be an instrument of destruction in the church of the living God, but will be an instrument of peace, an instrument of fellowship, an instrument of forgiveness, forgiving one another, fellowshiping one, with one another. And then when there is fellowship, and there will be faithfulness. We'll be faithful to one another. We'll not be doing hide and seek. We not say, oh, I will not want what I do. I will not want the leaders to know what I'm doing. No, there will be no hide and seek. There will be faithfulness. Your life will be plain. You will be open to one another. We can come into your house at any time, tea, and knock upon your door. And we we'll still see you to be a brother. We we'll still see you to be a sister. I pray the Lord will give us understanding in Jesus' name. After we receive this forgiveness, we must forgive others that might have wronged us in the past. It is only then we can experience with fellowship, fellowship with God and communion with the saints, the bride of Christ. Faithfulness to the Lord, faithfulness to the church of the living God, faithfulness to the word of the Lord, to the word of the Lord is also required from us if we must receive eternal rewards. Eternal reward for the work done on, for the Lord here on earth to serve his body and to spend eternity with him in glory. We must be faithful. We must be faithful in our commitment to the Lord. We must be faithful in our commitment to his word. We must be faithful in our commitment to the body of Christ. In that little corner where you are my brother. In that little corner where you are my sister. You want to do everything faithfully as unto the Lord. Not with eye service. And when we do all these things, then we will experience the power and the promises of God. We will fulfill in our lives in Jesus name. For better understanding of our message tonight I want to consider this under three subheading. Point one, forgiveness and cleansing from all sin. Forgiveness and cleansing from all sin. Point two, fellowship and communion among saints. Fellowship. Our fellowship is among saints. It's not among sinners. The Bible says, can two walk together and say they be agreed? No, it's among saints. And communion among saints. Then point three, Faithfulness and commendation for fellow soldiers. Faithfulness and commendation for fellow soldiers. Let's go straight to point one. Forgiveness and cleansing. Forgiveness and cleansing from all sin. From all sin. Let's go back again to our text where we've read before. Ephesians chapter 1 in verse 7. In whom we have redemption. Through his blood, the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. Redemption and forgiveness is only through the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not by the works of our righteousness. It's not by the, cho- the, by the tithes you give to the church. It's not by the riches you possess in the world. It's not by the things you offer. It's not by the names you bear. It's not by the culture you came from. We can only receive redemption and forgiveness of our sin through our Lord Jesus Christ. Forgiveness of sin is the foundation of all blessings, of all benefits, and of all self, of all relationship with the Lord. It is sin that hinders our prayers and breaks our relationship with God. It is sin that brings headache, heartaches, that brings sickness, that brings sorrow, that brings difficulties and problems to the world. Therefore, if we must remove this obstruction to our blessing, if we, must, if we must remove it, take away the obstacle, there must be the forgiveness of sin. And the Lord has promised to forgive. The Lord is ready to forgive. In Psalm 86, 
Psalm 86. I will read verse 5 of Psalm 86. You see the promise of the, the readiness of the Lord there to forgive. He says, For that Lord are good and worthy to forgive. God is worthy to forgive 24-7. 24-7. You know, this is the period of grace. This is the time the Lord is ready to forgive. This is the time you can cry to the Lord and receive forgiveness. Because a time is coming. When you will pray, but it will be too late. A time is coming. When you will knock on the door, but the door will, be, will refuse to open unto you. A time is coming. When you will cry, but those cries will be cries of regret, cries of adino. I pray that will not come to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the Lord is ready to forgive. Now the Bible says, now, now, because Jesus, the, our crucified King, He has paid the price, He has shed His blood. In whom we have forgiveness. A time is coming. That the blood of Jesus will not be available to cleanse and to forgive you of your sin. I pray it will not be too late for you in Jesus' name. This is the time. Now that the door of mercy is open unto you, my brother, linger no longer. Now that the door of mercy is open unto you, my sister, delay no longer. This is the acceptable time. At Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 3. Forgiveness and cleansing from all sin. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? It is, it is a salvation that is so great. It is great because it calls God himself, his only begotten son. It is a salvation that is great because they looked into all the heavens and they could not find anyone that could say, oh, I am ready to pay the price. I am ready to get the body. I am ready to go and die for the sinner except God himself. Willing to put on humanity, living his divinity, so that he can bear our sins on the cross. That's why it's great, my brother. That's why it's great, my sister. Now, that's what the Bible says. That how shall we escape? You cannot escape it if you neglect it. This forgiveness of sin we are talking about, you cannot escape it. If you, you know, disregard it, you cannot escape it. If you push it aside, you cannot escape it. If you exchange it with religious activities, you cannot escape it. Except you have this great salvation, you cannot escape the punishment and the judgment that is coming upon the sinners. That's why it says, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that had him. I pray you will not neglect it. Amen. I say, I pray you will not neglect it. Amen. That's why the spirit and the bride is speaking to you now. Maybe there is that sin in your life. Open up to the Lord. Confess it to the Lord. Don't hide it. The pastor may not know. The leaders in the church may not know. Your husband may not know. Your friend may not know. But you know there is a guilt in you. There is an unconfessed sin in your heart. This is the moment of your salvation. Don't neglect it. Because the Lord is ready to save. Because the Lord is ready to pardon. Because the Lord is ready to forgive you. Like Jesus himself. He told that man in Mark chapter 2. That man that was sick of the palsy, you, you will hear that same word today. I didn't hear your amen. amen. You will receive that same forgiveness today in Jesus' name. In Mark chapter 2, look at that word, the comforting word, the saving word. Mark chapter 2, verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith. You see that? It is faith that gives salvation. It is not the works of your hand. It is not the name, you, the titles you gain in the church. 
It is faith. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He saw their faith. He saw their sincerity. He saw that this man, they are willing. You know, there is the willingness to be forgiven. And when Jesus saw their faith, I pray Jesus will see your faith today. I didn't hear your amen. Amen. I pray Jesus will see your faith today in Jesus' name. And you will be saved. And you will be delivered. And you will stand for the Lord in Jesus' name. He said unto the sick of the palsy, son, son, no longer stranger, no longer sinner. You know, people tell us today that, Pastor, you know, religion is of the heart. I don't do religion of the heart. I do the religion. If any man is in, a new, is in Christ, is a new creature, whole things are passed away. There is a change of name. That's the kind of religion I do. There is a change of personality. That's the kind of religion I do. There is a change, a change of the heart. That's the kind of religion I do. There is a change of lifestyle. There is a change of taste. Because he says there, here was a man, a sinner before, a man sick of the palsy before. Jesus did not say, oh, oh sinner. No, he says, son. You know, son, son, son. These are the, you know, this is a man that is forgiven. When your sins are forgiven, you become sons and daughters of the kingdom of God. He says, son, thy sins, thy sins, thy sins, give it to me, thy sins, thy sins, thy sins. sins." Say it as if you are receiving it today. Thy sins be forgiven thee. You will receive that forgiveness of sin today in Jesus' name. It comes by faith. It also comes by confession. In 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. Chapter 1 of 1 John. I will read from verse 7. Verse 9, rather. If we confess our sins. If you must receive this forgiveness, you must confess your sin. There is no sin that will be swept under the carpet by God. God does not do that. The judge of the earth may sweep your crime under the carpet, but God does not do that. Get it right. If you must receive this forgiveness of sin from God, there must be a confession. He says, if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God is faithful. I say God is faithful. When we confess, we will receive forgiveness. When we confess, we will receive cleansing. When we confess, we will receive pardon. When we confess, we will receive justification. When we confess, we will receive redemption. When we confess, we will receive peace. And this peace will come unto us in Jesus' name. Pardon that we attract all the blessings from God, you will receive in Jesus' name. There is forgiveness and pardon with God. But then, like I say, after you have received that forgiveness, the Lord now the Lord now expects you that you now go out there and show and demonstrate that same forgiveness you have received from God to other people, others that have offended you, others that have stepped on your toes. Others, you know, that have done things that have hurt you. The Lord expects in Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. I'll read from verse 21. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? Do you see that? Peter did not just say, how often will my, husband, will my brother offend me? He said, sin. He even gave it a, you know, a great name. Sin! Sin. Did you say sin against the Lord? I'm asking you, did you say how often will my brother sin against the Lord? No. That's why in this church, we believe and we stand on it that if you are genuinely born again, you will not sin. You will not sin against God. 
You know, sin against God. People say, oh, pastor, you know, we are still human flesh. When you are born again, there will still be that tendency. You still commit sin, rising and falling. There is nothing like that. He says, the seed of God will manage in him that he cannot do what? Sin. Sin against God. If you are born again, you will not sin against God. But then, even if you are born again, you are sanctified. This is Peter. You know who Peter is? Maybe I should give you, I don't want me to run this title to you. Time will fail me. Amen? Amen. An apostle. And yet he say, Lord, before you go, we need to settle this sin now. Because me and John, we are always, you know, Lord, before, we, before you go, we need to settle this sin now. Because we saw people and we wanted to command fire upon them. And you said, hold your fire. Uh-uh. These people, they sinned against us now. They offended us. Lord, we need to settle this thing now. And Peter was expecting that the Lord would say, well, if you are a child of God, you are a Christian, you will not sin against one another. No, Jesus didn't say that. Jesus even expanded it. He said, Peter, you are just talking of sin. But me, I'm multiplying it now. Seventy times seven sins. That's why he's God. You know, this Jesus, I'm telling you, brethren, heaven will be full of surprises. Heaven will be full of surprises. Whoever thought that that thief on the cross will ever get to heaven. You know, you are not God. Don't stand in the place of God, my brother. Let God be God. And you be woman. Look at Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Peter, look at what Peter asked him. Lord, how often shall my brother sin? He didn't say sins against me. How, he was thinking he does one. But what did the Lord say? And he even said, Lord, and I forgive him. He even put his own back. He even put his own. You know, that's why, that's why many of us, we miss it. We put our own standard on other people, not the standard of the word of God. You see where we miss it? That's why many of us, we don't have souls. We don't have convert. Because you are expecting that here you are. You, you are five years in the Lord. You have spent five years in Christianity. And somebody you just wish to, today, today, you want that person to be like you. It's not possible. Don't put your standard on people. Give them the standard of the word of God. Peter put his standard, his own bar, and say, Lord, I know you are a, even, I know you, you will even extend it, but then, Lord, is this the 70 times? Seven times? That's my bar. That's how far I can go. But look at what Jesus said. Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee, until seven times, but until what? Seventy times seven. Seventy times seven. Seventy times seven. And that is in a day, in a day, in a day. I pray God will give us the heart of Jesus. You know, brethren, that's where we can that's how that's how we can have fellowship. When there's always forgiveness coming from you, that brother step on your foot, forgive. That sister did what you don't like, forgive. That's how we can have we fellowship among ourselves. Forgiveness. He says seventy times, and then he now gave us the, uh, the story of that man that was forgiven and he refused to forgive the other servant. Then what was the judgment on him? In verse 35. So likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you. If ye from your heart. You see, many of us, we don't do superficial forgiveness. It's not coming from the heart. We say, oh my brother, I'm forgiving you. Okay, thank you. But you know, still in your heart, you are still holding that heart against that brother. Let it go. Let it go. The standard of the word of God is that the forgiveness must come from the heart, not from the head. Many of us, 
our head knowledge have destroyed the spirit of forgiveness in us. Many of us, our spirituality has, you know, has taken away the spirit of forgiveness in our heart. No more forgiveness from the heart. Now we just forget, okay, oh, my brother, I'm forgiving you. My sister, I'm forgiving you. And yet you know in your heart, you are still holding that thing against that brother. You are still holding that thing against that sister. That's not the forgiveness Christ is saying. He says it must come from the heart. I pray God will give us that heart in Jesus' name. Amen. This leads us to point two, fellowship and communion among saints. If you must have fellowship, if you must have communion, unity, fellowship, oneness among us, there must be forgiveness. There must be forgiveness, fellowship. If we must have this true fellowship, in Acts chapter 2, where we've read, the Bible tells us there in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. A fellowship without the apostles' doctrine is not the biblical fellowship. It's not. It's not. A fellowship where, you know, they won't down, they won't down the doctrines of the Bible. It's not a biblical fellowship. That's why you see, in our church here, we always encourage people, don't go everywhere. It's not everywhere they call the name of Jesus that they keep to the doctrine of the apostles. It's not. It's not every fellowship where they put Jesus, you know, his Lord and Savior, church, chapel. It's not everywhere you go to. You ask yourself, in that fellowship, is the apostles' doctrine there? If we must have we fellowship, if we must have biblical fellowship, the doctrines of the apostles, the doctrine of Christ, the doctrine of the word of God must come to the center of it. People will tell us, oh, so well, that's why you see you live a life where you don't unite with other people. No, no. And if we must unite with people, we must fellowship with them, then they must also believe we must come with the word of God. They say, take the doctrine, forget doctrine now. This is fellowship. No, the Bible didn't tell, didn't tell us that. He says they continue first in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship. I pray we will keep to that, fel- to that doctrine in Jesus' name. Amen. The doctrine of forgiveness. The doctrine of one man, one wife. Not a pastor having many girlfriends in the church. The doctrine of holiness. Follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. We keep to that. And then we have fellowship. Fellowship. You know, can two walk together? Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3 tells us, except they be agreed, they cannot walk together. We cannot have fellowship if we don't agree together. We cannot, we cannot have fellowship if we don't agree the standard of the word of God together. We go against the word of God. We cannot have fellowship. But if we must have true fellowship, it says even in Psalm, open your Bible with me to Psalm 94. Psalm 94. We cannot have fellowship with unbelievers. This fellowship we are talking about is fellowship among saints. Saints of God going in the same direction. Walking, in the, walking by the same rule of the word of God. Psalm 94, verse 20. It says, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? Throne of iniquity will not have fellowship with me. I'm saying it to myself. Oh. Throne of iniquity will not have fellowship with me. That's it. That's the way we must have fellowship. There must be no throne of iniquity. There must be no sin. Fellowship with God reminds us of the intimate, fruitful, and revealing fellowship Adam and Eve had with God in the Garden of Eden. When you look at the Garden of Eden, the kind of fellowship we are talking about before the fall. In that garden, there was protection. In that garden, there was satisfaction. In that garden, there was freedom. 
In that garden, there was authority. Whatever Adam gave to the animals, that was their name. In that garden, because there was sweet fellowship, there was assurance. In that garden, Adam even had rest. Even had rest. This is the kind of fellowship the Lord is calling us to have. Fellowship in your family. Fellowship in the church of the living God. Fellowship among ourselves. I pray the Lord will give us this kind of fellowship in Jesus' name. Amen. Fellowship where there will be protection. You will not be the one that will be exposing the brother. You will not be the one that will be exposing that sister to evil. We will learn to protect one another. We will learn to guide one another. You see a brother is getting closer to a sister. You, you are a brother in that church. You will not close your eyes and say, well, it doesn't concern me. It concerns you, my brother. It concerns you, my sister. Because you have the responsibility to protect that brother. In that fellowship, in that church, when there is fellowship, we will guide one another. You see, that brother is going the downward train of backsliding. You will not allow him to go. You will seek after him. That's the kind of fellowship. In true fellowship, there will be satisfaction. You come to the church, you'll be satisfied. There will be satisfaction in the congregation. You will not be the one everybody is enjoying themselves. And here you are, you are the one every time moody, every time sad, every time. It seems to you as if you are Jesus. You are not Jesus. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. In true fellowship. When we have this fellowship, you know, there will be freedom. Freedom inter- of interacting with one another. We are not talking of lasciviousness. We are talking about liberty. Because he says, if the Spirit of God shall set you free, where the Spirit of God is, there is what? Liberty. We are not suspicious. And say, well, <laughs> that one that gave you food to him, say, I don't know what he has put in that food now. That's not Christian fellowship. We'll be free with one another. We can knock on each other's door. You'll not be the one and say, well, I don't want them to touch my own children. I don't know. The... No, no, that's not true Christian fellowship. We'll be free. Your doors will be open. You'll not say, oh, my brother, did you tell me you are coming now? Why are you coming? I don't have time. Ah, ah. Christian fellowship. I pray God will deliver us. Yeah. I remember some years ago, there was one particular brother. I had to call him. Around 12 midnight, and thank God for that. But that's what we call Christian fellowship. The brother did not say, Pastor, you know, because the Lord just laid it in my heart to call that brother at that point in time. And I had to call him around 12 midnight. The brother didn't say, Oh, Pastor, why are you calling me at this time? And we called, we cancelled, we prayed together, and it was a wonderful fellowship we had. You know, in true Christian fellowship, we can knock on your door at any time, T. We can bash into you at any time. You know, be the one, you see that word on the ice, you're hiding. What are you? Why are you hiding? Why are you hiding? Why are you hiding from the brother? Why are you hiding from the sister? Where there is true Christian fellowship, there will be freedom, there will be liberty, there will be authority. Because he says that two of you shall do what? Shall do what? Shall do what? Eh? Shall chase 10,000. You will have the authority. And whatsoever thing you bind your night, shall be do what? Shall be bound in the. Why is it that we say, oh, we have having prayer meeting? Let's come with prayer request. You can't come with prayer. Say, well, if I submit prayer request now, I don't know. They will go and be gossiping me here and there. That's not Christian fellowship. And when we come for prayer meeting, we'll come. You will you not be asking questions and say, ah, where is that sister that gave that prayer request? What is your own problem? Just pray for her. That's Christian fellowship. Why do you want to know? I will not be giving interpretation. You will not be the one when the prayer request is being made. You will not begin to interpret. Uh-huh. It's like uh, it's like that prayer is for me. Why? Why? We need to come together and pray. When there is true Christian fellowship, we have authority. And tonight, all the things the devil has stolen from our fellowship. Tonight, I'm believing the Lord. Everything will be restored in Jesus' name. When there is true Christian fellowship. You will not be the one when there is peace. You say, well, I think these people, they enjoy it. Let me just turn things around. Wow, why do you want to do that? Why do you want to do that? 
Let the peace of God continue. We edify one another. We encourage, where there is true Christian fellowship, we encourage one another. We build up one another. Where there is true Christian fellowship, you will not cause division. Where there is true Christian fellowship, you will not cause disaffection. Where there is true Christian fellowship, you will not destabilize the church, the body of Christ. Where there is true Christian fellowship, we will not destroy one another. Where there is true Christian fellowship, you will not dead in the gift of that brother. You will not dead in the gift of that sister and say, ah, if I lie in Brunner, he will shine more than me. What is that? We don't compete in Christian fellowship. There is no kind of comparison in Christian fellowship. We build up one another. We will not demoralize one another. We will not defy the church of the living God. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And when we do all these things, then there will be faithfulness and commendation for fellow soldiers. This is also point three quickly. Faithfulness and commendation for fellow soldiers. It, moreover, it is required in steward that a man be found faithful. We need to be faithful. Husband and wife, be faithful. Do you know that there are some husbands, their wives don't have their password. And I hope those husbands are not here. I hope you are not here. If you are here, let your wife have all your passwords. Am I talking to those husbands? Look at me now, eyeball to eyeball. <laughs> what are you hiding from your wife? What are you hiding? There are some husbands. Ladies are calling them. They, will, they won't put the phone on speaker and let their wife hear what the ladies are saying. He said, ah, I'm a pastor. Ah, pastor. I am a worker. Worker. Ah. Two of you is the same ministry. Or oh, you don't know. You must work on the night. Your wife must support you. Your husband must support you. If your wife is not support, I remember many years ago, there was one of our missionary, you know, the wife did not support the husband and said, my husband should go there. You know what the GS did? The GS recalled the missionary back and said, sorry, your wife didn't support you. Please come back and be with your wife. That's the standard of the word of God. What are we hiding? We must be faithful to one another. Let your wife, you know, there are some people now, money has destroyed their families. Wife have no access to their account. Yeah. Husband have no access to their account. Why, why are we doing that to ourselves? Husband and wife, we must be faithful in money matter. We must be faithful to one another. Let your wife have your password. Let your husband have, you know, there's some, uh, some husband. If their wife is going through their, their phone and they'll begin to challenge the woman, what are you looking for? Ah, uh-uh. please, wife. If your husband asks you, tell them, Pastor Israel says you should look at his phone. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Are you going to do that? Yes. You have the, I'm giving you the liberty from today. Check your husband's phone. Yes. Go into his personal email. Look at the emails that are coming to your husband. Yes. Look at the emails because you are the one that can keep your husband. You are the one that can keep your wife. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And then we need to be faithful to God as well. Faithful to God. Faithful to one another. Faithful to the Lord. When we do all these things, then there will be commendation. There will be reward. We will receive reward from the Lord. We will receive the crown of life. We will receive the crown of righteousness. We will receive the incorruptible crown. There will be crown of glory. There will be crown with stars. We'll get the soul winner's crown, and we have the crown of gold. When we do all these things, the Lord will reward us. Brethren, the Lord is calling us today. Are your sins forgiven? Wash in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you cleansed by the blood of the Lamb? If you have been forgiven, are you showing forgiveness to other people as well? Those who have offended you, do you forgive them from your heart? Do you forgive them? Let there be fellowship, fellowship with one another, where there have been broken fellowship. We don't communicate with one another. We don't talk to one another again. Let there be fellowship. You know, this life is so short. 
that we live our lives settling quarrels. It's so short. The sinners are there waiting for us. Why is it that it's in the house of God? It's what we're going out there to win the sinners and bring them into the kingdom. In the house of God, we are settling quarrels. Our pastors now don't have time to read the word of God because they are not trying to settle families from families, brothers to brothers, sisters to sisters. No, I pray from today, all these things we saw. You will free our pastors. We will have fellowship. Fellowship among ourselves. Communion among ourselves. You will not destroy the body of Christ. We will edify the body of Christ. And the Lord will bless us when we do all these things in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. You want to commit yourself to the hands of the Lord. That the Lord will help you, my brother. That the Lord himself will help you, my sister. Let there be peace. In that local church where you are coming from, let there be peace, let there be forgiveness. Have you received forgiveness of your sin? Then we forgive one another. We fellowship with one another, husband and wife. Let's forgive one another. Let's build up one another. Let's encourage one another. Let's hold one another hand in hand. What will be your joy if your brother did not make heaven? What will be your joy if your sister did not make heaven? We are to support one another to make heaven. Do everything within you. Don't let that brother backslide. Don't put, what will be your joy? If that brother is put down and you are put there, what will be your joy? What will be your joy? When we are now scarcely enough you know, position, we are now aiming to take over the world from that brother, what will be your joy? Let's build up one another. Let's encourage one another. Let there be fellowship. Let there be forgiveness. Whatever your wife has done, forgive her. Whatever that brother has done, forgive him. Whatever that sister has done, forgive her. Let there be forgiveness. Forgiveness, we see forgiveness from God. And forgiveness among ourselves. And let there be fellowship. Fellowship with God. Fellowship in the doctrine, in the word of God. Through fellowship. By beautiful fellowship and the Lord Himself, we help us in Jesus' name.